Chagas is a semi-state body. We're responsible for research, education and um, extension. So in other words, we do a lot of research, but we also are engaged fully with, with farmers in getting that research out to farmers to use the technologies that we've developed and also to educating both the young farmers and the undergraduates of the coming years. I'm an animal breeder. Um, so everything to do with animal breeding I'm interested in. So that requires collection of data, be it DNA based data or actual data on performance, generation of what we call genetic evaluation. So in other words, the statistical methodology to determine what is a good animal and what is a bad animal. And more recently that has involved the incorporation of DNA information into those evaluations. Then to do this for several performance traits and how much do you weight these traits um, optimally to so they fight off against each other. So for example, do you want the sheep to grow fast and how important is that relative to say the fertility of the dam? And then finally in what we call decision support tools. So it's advising farmers on what's the best decisions to make to increase the value of their operations. And again, that's using both uh, genetic information, genetic genomic information, but also management information. A lot of what we're talking about, if we look at um, performance in many species um, for the several past few decades, around half the improvement in performance has actually due, been due to genetics. So obviously therefore genetics is a good foundation because it's permanent, permanent and cumulative and you can build on it year on year. So what we want to do is to do the best genetic evaluations possible, so in other words more accurately identify the good animals from the bad animals. And of course we don't always know that at birth, but we know that your DNA stays the same throughout your life. So if we look at the DNA of a newborn animal, be it a calf or be it a lamb or any type of a species, we can use that technology, the DNA information, to determine not only how good that animal is likely to perform, but also its progeny. And the Axiom technology allows us to do that at a low cost. challenges in sheep breeding are the same for, for all species, it's, it's all about sustainability. And by sustainability I mean economic sustainability, social sustainability and environmental sustainability. So if we talk about agriculture in general and particularly actually the sheep industry, it's a low margin industry, so economic sustainability is key. So again what we want is we want farmers so that the next generation of animals are better than the current generation, that's all about breeding. If you talk about from an environmental sustainability, of course, greenhouse gas emissions are one of the biggest issues at the, mo at the moment, and sheep are what we call ruminants. They produce greenhouse gas emissions. So what we want to do is breed for animals that produce less greenhouse gas emissions. But to measure greenhouse gas emissions is, is very expensive. So one option that you can use is to use genomic or DNA technologies to help reduce the, the, the reliance on actually measuring greenhouse gas emissions. And then the final one, of course, is social responsibility or sustainability. And um, what we call AMR, antimicrobial resistance, is becoming the, really the hot topic from a human medicine perspective. And a lot of that is possibly driven from the animals and, and the food that, that, that we eat. So in that scenario, we want to breed for animals that are healthy. And again, collecting health information is very, very difficult, especially on sheep. So again, this genomic technology allows us the opportunity to breed for animals that are less susceptible or more resilient to, to any pathogens or any other sort of perturbation. The field has to move to Something similar to, I guess, in humans, uh, where most people are probably familiar with precision medicine or precision management. So in other words, what that means um, from an animal perspective is managing the animal differently depending on its genetic merit or its DNA profile. And we, we've been doing this for, for millennia. Um, so we would manage um, animals that mature later differently to animals that mature earlier. But what genomic technology allows us to do is gets into that a little bit more detail. So yes, um, in beef, for example, you'd have a Charlie animal that we all know they all mature late, uh, while the Angus animal mature earlier. But I can show you Charlie animals that mature earlier than Angus animals. And with, with DNA information, that's what allows us to go in, tell the farmer that, and this comes back to my earlier point of decision support tools, then we can tell the farmer what decisions he needs to make to maximise both the social environment and social sustainable issues associated with, with, with that animal. 
my experience with Timorous uh, Fisher has been excellent. I've um, been working with them now for several years across uh, different platforms and different species. Um, in particular, it's about having the ability to add content to the, the platform very rapidly, but also guarantee that that content has been added. So for example, we know with the developments that are happening in DNA technologies and the statistical methodologies associated with them, that we can identify regions of the DNA that are causing certain effects. Now once we find them, we want to get that out to farmers straight away. And we want to be sure that if we add that to a genotyping platform, that it will be added to the chip and that farmers will have that information immediately. At the end of the day, it comes back to the sustainability issue of economic sustainability. It has to be low cost, um, has to be rapid throughput, high throughput as well. So that we want the farmers that will adopt this technology because we know this technology will achieve better genetic gain, which at the end of the day makes it more sustainable.